like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Aloha everybody, it's Mar. Thanks for tuning in. One little unknown fact about me is that I'm a Reiki practitioner and I have been for the last three years. One of the many tools that I use in my field of work is crystals. It helps to raise your vibration, keep, help keep your, protect your energy field and your aura around you. Reiki has been very useful in my life and amongst my family and friends. It's been something that I turn to in many times when I feel overwhelmed and a little anxious. It's taught me a lot about myself and it's made me a better person by just utilizing it in my everyday life and sharing it amongst the people that are close to me. And one of the ways that I love to do that is through making crystal bracelets. And through making these bracelets and spending my time with the crystal, I transmute positive energy into these crystals. Quoting my Reiki master, good friend and mentor, Brit Yap. Reiki healing is simply universal life force energy. And nearly every culture around the world for centuries had healers that laid hands. These people were using their chi, mana, prana, ki to help people heal. Okay, everybody. It's Mar. Here I am with my really good friend, Brit Yap. She is a Reiki master and one of my mentors so i'm going to turn it over to her and let her talk about reiki okay hi everyone my name is brit i'm originally from maui i actually live in alameda california now with um my husband and my kids and i'm a reiki master teacher which means not only do i practice but i actually teach and i've been doing a lot more of that lately um and also i am a hypnotherapist and a spiritual life coach all that means is I help people go from here to where they want to be <laughs> with the awesome. different techniques that I use, whether it's energy, whether it's the mind. Um, I'm just helping people go from where they are to wherever they want to be um, and just learning and growing and reflecting and releasing things that um, is no longer needed in their life. Yeah. So, so what okay. questions do you have for me today? Okay. Well, uh, one of my questions is, what do you say to people who don't believe in life force energy or don't believe in the energy? Um, I think a lot of people get kind of stumped on the word Reiki itself. So I think it'd be really good to just give people kind of like my own description of Reiki. But Reiki is a hands on or hands off natural healing technique using universal life force energy. So the term Reiki, Rei, R-E-I, actually means universal and Ki, K-I, means vital life force energy. And it flows through all living things. Yes, humans, animals, plants, the rocks, the mountains, the trees, all of it. Um, if there wasn't life force energy, your plant in your house would be dead. That's what happens when things um, die. Okay, so Reiki is an abundant, gentle, spiritual energy not tied to any specific religion um, or nationality. The founder of Reiki. Um, he was Japanese and he was downloaded with these messages and became a teacher and, and just spread the good word of how to tap back into universal life force energy. Cause sometimes we forget, you know, um, and just like Jesus, Buddha, Dalai Lama, all these people came to earth and they were just teachers to remind us about love and source energy. And so all Reiki is, is tapping into source. Some people call it God, some people call it great spirit, but really it's just energy. It's universal life force energy that flows through all of us. For people who live in Hawaii, or if you're Hawaiian, our word is mana. If you're in India, the word is prana. And if you watch martial arts movies growing up, the word is chi, right? That's probably what we hear the most growing up is chi, right? right? That's right. just life force energy. And so that runs and flows through all living things. So I laugh when people say, well, I don't believe in that stuff. I'm like, well, it doesn't matter. It's a law, you know, like it exists. If you don't believe in gravity, you're still getting pulled towards the earth every moment of your life, unless you're doing something else in the air. But whether or not somebody uh, like understands or believes in Reiki, energy is everywhere. We are all made of energy. That's all there is, is just energy. Um, so I just kind of chuckle because 
So all that shows me is they don't understand either one what Reiki is or they didn't pass physics class. Um, so, you know, uh, <laughs> the law of conservation says that energy cannot be created nor destroyed. It can only be transferred or transformed. Okay, so you can't create it. You can't destroy it. You can only transfer or transform it. So for me, like if someone's having a bad day and I'm observing this and then maybe they're driving on the freeway and they cut someone off and then that person gets mad and they drive like an asshole and they go home and they're all mad from a hard day at work. Their boss was mean and some person cut them off and now they go take it on their wife and kids. All that was was a transference of energy. Now, the same thing could have happened to someone, but that person, instead of taking it on their kids, decided to transform that energy. Maybe they stopped at the store and got themselves like a candy bar or an ice cream, or maybe they went fishing for a half an hour and blew off some steam and transformed that energy and came home in a better vibration and in a better mindset. Right. So all we, all I observe really all day long is people making a decision, whether they're aware or not aware of it, whether they transferring energy, whether it be positive or negative or transforming energy from something negative to positive or even positive to negative. We see some of that too. Okay. So every given moment of every day, these universal laws are in effect, right? Like the law of gravity, like the law of attraction, like the law of karma. We talk about this. So whether or not people understand it or believe in it, these things are at play. So I would say, especially to your community, you know, they have to know the rules of the game to play it, right? Yes. If they're playing in, you know, gambling or doing what, you know, in Vegas and they don't understand all the rules then they're not going to be that great at it. Exactly. Right. So um, it's quite fascinating because I, I love to teach or remind people these universal laws, um, because the more you understand what it's what's at play and how to use it to your benefit and then you don't get so frustrated. Um, I think that's that's really important to understand. Yes. Perfect. All right. Well, thank you for joining us today <laughs> and for being a guest speaker. I really appreciate you <laughs> taking the time out of your very busy schedule. All right. All right, guys. I want to welcome you to Oneula Beach Park. It's actually located on the southern shores of the island of Oahu. Uh, from this vantage point, you can see Diamond Head, uh, Waikiki. Diamond Head's like right here. Waikiki. Looks like it drizzled a little here. And uh, this beach has a pretty rocky coastline, but it's there's a few pockets where you could um, get into the sandbar to swim. This is mostly a surfing and bodyboarding beach and a lot of fishing. You can see this way, there's some fishermen right here. But again, southern coastline. So if you arriving on an airline flying into Oahu, a lot of them follow this coastline, head all the way out west, just off the coast there, turn around and uh, head to the airport, which is probably located somewhere right here. Salt water is a natural cleansing for crystals, burning dried sage, etc. But since I'm from Hawaii and this place very grounded to this place. This place brings me peace. I love the water. Can't get enough of it. Uh, this kind of beach and scenery gives me a lot of peace and a lot of grounding. I'm here today to get myself focused before my trip. It's a few days out from my trip to the mainland. I'll be spending a week in California before I head over into Las Vegas. And because my trip is such an extended trip for me, I like to come here and focus on the things that I need to get done, not only during my trip in California, but also for my trip for Las Vegas. Also, it's a good opportunity for me to bring my crystals to the beach, get it cleansed in the ocean,
Okay. Got my abundance candle. It's got beautiful crystals in it. Citrine, clear quartz, aquamarine, amazonite. All that good As you can see, these are the crystals that I travel with and I bring to my hotel room. I'm gonna show you guys how I sage the hotel room. I'm not gonna make it too crazy because that's not what I'm trying to do. So I broke up the sage, get something really small like this and just a few. See that smoke? Just like that. And I'm clearing the, trying to clear my hotel room. And I'm thinking about all the energies that I don't want in here. We want good positive energy around us. We want it surrounding me for abundance and our crew. Yeah? Sage is such a good way to cleanse energy. Yes, that's how I like to set it up, right there. Just like that. Just to get into the water, especially after being away for so long. I know it doesn't seem like much, but for me, grounding and being at the ocean. After being away for so long and coming back to the beach to ground myself once again, I like to always reflect back and give gratitude for a healthy and happy return home. Also for keeping everyone that I traveled with safe and healthy and for all of the abundance that surrounded us during the trip. Not only do I reflect on everything that went well, I also like to think on the things that I can do to improve. Beautiful day here today. So here I am today at the beach, enjoying some time. Letting the water touch my feet. Letting my feet feel grounded to this place. 